What's up guys, I've got a bit of a problem here. My car won't start and this is not the first time. Over the past few weeks it got less and less reliable and I had to jumpstart it multiple times. The battery is completely flat with just 1.13 volts across the terminals. I can't really believe it so I measure at different points and scratch the surface of the metal to remove some of the oxide layers. But I can't measure anything above the current voltage. I guess that's it, the battery is dead. Or is it? In order to take it out I first remove the terminal and then all the stuff on top of it. It took me a while because there are some small hidden clamps that were a real pain in the ass but eventually I got everything off and lifted the battery out. In order to charge it I use a special charger with a mode for pulse repair charging. To be honest I don't know exactly how this works but in broad terms it should remove some of the oxides inside the battery and restore some of its capacity. I'd really love to dive deeper into this, but for now I just need my car to work so I can get to uni, work and the hardware store. While that's charging, let's take a closer look at the relay that I bought. As you can see it's rated for 200 amps at 12 volts and a starting current of up to 360 amps. Sounds massive, right? I wonder why they are using cable connectors rated for only 100 amps though. Now while that doesn't make any sense, at least the casing is made out of glass fiber reinforced plastic, which doesn't fall apart when you touch it, which is nice and unexpected. Let's take a look inside, shall we? On the inside you can see a 12 volt solenoid switch with two big copper wires leading up to the contact plate. I'm actually surprised by their thickness, as I expected them to be smaller. The switch is actuated by sending a small current through the magnet and responds to a wireless transmitter that I can attach to my keychain. I first thought about installing a manual switch, but this is much easier. I put everything back together and head down to the garage to pick up the fully charged battery which seems to be working again. Once the battery pack is back in place, it's time to remove the first terminal. I decided to use the negative as the breaking point because there are other things connected to the positive. For lack of a better tool I used a cordless Dremel clone to cut through the thick starter cables. It's important to not mess the copper wires up too much as this is a high current connection that needs to have a low resistance. It's also not something that I have laying around in case I cut it too short. Handling the wire is a bit difficult and it took some patience to get a good fit, but in the end it worked. Now that the breaker is connected, we need to give the solenoid some power to work when I click the remote. It's got an inbuilt resistor so you can directly hook it up to the battery terminals. So I connect the negative side to the ground and the positive side to the screw where this whole top section is hooked up. Now the moment of truth. Will it work? Huh. Of course not, because I connected it the wrong way around. In this setup the circuit is open and stays open until it gets power, but it can only get power when it's closed. Long story short, the black cable needs to switch sides, so the circuit breaker is the only thing that always has power. But wait a minute, if it needs power to work, won't it flatten my battery as well? Let's see. If it draws a constant current of 0.005 amps and my battery has a capacity of 60 ampere hours, that would mean a standby time of 12,000 hours or around 500 days until it's completely dead. In reality that's a lot less because of two reasons. One, you can never use the full capacity of a battery without damaging it and two, this relay only works with a minimum voltage of 11 volts. To put it into perspective, here's a better example. In one week this will roughly draw the same amount of energy as one iPhone 14 charge. And that's absolutely no problem for the car battery. So as long as I drive my car once a month I should be fine because even though this uses a tiny amount of energy the leaking current inside the car's system is much higher because that's completely draining the battery within 4 days. Now it finally works and you can hear the solenoid switching on and off. Even though the remote clicks as well you can clearly hear the metallic reverb from the spring inside the box. Let's see if we can start. Nice, after a tiny hiccup the car started just fine over and over again. And that's all I wanted. I know this fix isn't perfect, as I didn't really solve the root cause of the problem, but it saves me a lot of time troubleshooting and testing every single wire or the heavy bill a professional repair shop would charge. It's also not completely unsafe to drive, because even if the battery accidentally shuts off, the car keeps running as it's designed to be self-sustaining. Of course I'm not responsible for any problems this might cause with your car. I'm just a guy on the internet screwing around with things that interest me. See you in the next one.
Bye. Bye.